y'all, what is going on guys, Shinigami here, and I'm bringing you the old Tiandi tutorial, the Tiandi after CCU tutorial, and right here, I got one of my new outfits out, I figured I might as well show it here, and then later on I'll just do a, a dual video showcasing it, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into this tutorial, it's got people been uh, asking me to do one so i'm going to split this thing up into three categories we're going to have the basic the advanced tips outfits and some ending comments and i'm going to put a uh, stamp in the comment section or time stamp in the comment section to skip to whatever category you want because some of you might already know the basics some of you might not know the basics you know all that so first off i want to start with Beyond these lights, to start off the basics. So his lights. All of them do 12 damage. Well, I should say starter lights. All of them do 12 damage, no matter what side they're on. So there's that little bit of information for you. Um, his heavies. 24 on the left and right, 27 on the top, let's demonstrate that again for you, alright, and his chains, he has, I believe, what, four chains, yeah, four chains, so he has light, light, and fun fact, the ender light, also the 12, Then he has light heavy. And the ender heavy, no matter what side it comes from, always does 30. So it goes 30 from the top and 30 from the left and right. Alright. And next is his heavy light. And then after heavy light is the obvious heavy heavy. Right. And another thing I probably should have said, uh, sorry for the audio, I am indeed using my phone to record this because uh, I don't really have an option uh, or another option to really use to record for this. So just making do with what I have. Next, I want to go over his dodge lights. The top dodge light does 12 damage. Comes out kind of quick. And fun fact, all of his dodge lights are undodgeable, so don't try to dodge them to escape because it's not going to work. For some reason, people keep forgetting that. Uh, <clears throat> side dodge lights all do 10. The top one is the only one that does 12. And okay, next. His dodge heavies. Right, the left and right both do 25. And the top dodge heavy, <coughs> or forward dodge heavy, I should say, does 22. And it is also armored. It is Tiandi's only armored attack. And the armor starts up kind of late, so don't think you can just willy nilly whip it out and drop it. It doesn't work like that. <clears throat> now the next thing we want to go over is his zone. The first hit does 15. The second hit does 20. And the zone can also be fainted. So you don't want to go throughout with the whole thing. You can just press B to faint. Next is his palm strike. Palm Strike guarantees a light attack and does not wall splat. Um, and another thing you could do after the Palm Strike would be a Heavy. However, the Heavy is not guaranteed in any circumstance. Now there is a uh, time that you could use the Heavy, which is if somebody dodges the Palm Strike. 
Because if they dodge the palm strike, they probably expect to uh, expect you to throw a light. And then you throw a heavy. And since the heavy is also armored, um, just in case they were to throw an attack that would knock you out of your light, or if they were trying to parry, you would just go right through it. But some people do wait for that heavy. And those are only really big brain people, so if you're not fighting a big brain gamer, you ain't really got to worry that much about it. And next would be his kick. He's got lead's potential and it sends you flying pretty far. And on average, you can't get damage from it. But I will get into that later in the events section. And I believe that's all for, oh wait, I'll probably go over his running option. So as you're sprinting, you can do a heavy. It does 24 damage and it does not guarantee a follow up. That is it. You can also get the kick off of a zone. And to do that, just press X after the first of the zone. And there's the kick. For the guard break, if you get a guard break, it's the D. Always do a side heavy. You cannot do a top heavy, and I'm about to show you that right now. If you do a top heavy, it will get blocked. Side heavy, it's going to block. Top heavy. Alright. Alright, so next thing I want to go over is the advanced stuff. We're getting a little fancy now. So, first thing I want to talk about is the frame advantage. So, since the CCU, which is core combat update, light spam is not really a thing as much. So, what that means is that after your light chain, like this, you're put into frame disadvantage. Now, what does frame disadvantage mean? That means, if you were to do this, and then try to press a button afterwards, Orochi could throw a light and knock me out of my light after my light chain, which is bad news for us. However, that does not mean, you know, we can't block it or parry it and whatnot. We can still block and parry, we just can't start pressing buttons willy-nilly. So uh, rest in peace to all you uh, Tiandi abusers there, out there. <clears throat> but, and one thing you can do is like heavy of a heavy chain. Why you might ask? Because you are not at frame disadvantage after a heavy or after a heavy finisher. So after a heavy finisher, you are at a frame advantage. Meaning you could press a button afterwards and a roti you know, wouldn't be able to really do anything. He could try to light you out of it, but it won't work. Or really anybody could try to light you out of it and it wouldn't work because you are at frame advantage and you could press light and it would hit them before they hit you. So yeah, that's, that's it for that. It also works on zones, by the way, because the zones uh, constitute as heavies. Okay, so now that's, that little bit is over. You want to talk about Tiandi's Crush Encounter. Some people call it a Superior Light. I prefer Crush Encounter. So I'm going to have Roach do it. He's going to do that. And I'm going to Crush Encounter him. Okay. And it looks like that. And there's 22 damage. Roach, are you going to do it? Oh, okay. And Crush Encounters are really good. But in my honest opinion, I would not recommend you do a crush encounter on <clears throat> light attacks. And why, you might ask? Because you get more damage off of parry. Because as you see, the crush encounter did 22 damage. Now when you get a parry as D, or a light parry I should say, you can do 27. Now why would you go for the crush encounter which will do 20, 22? We you could just parry, which is significantly easier, and do 27, and even get an execution. See, before, 
the CCU. Beyond D, you could do this with the Crushing Cap. And that did, in fact, do more than parry. I believe it did, what, 36 damage back in the day? But now he does not get a guaranteed palm strike after a crushing counter. So really that 22 is your only uh, guaranteed damage and anything after that can be uh, countered. <clears throat> so that's why I say just stick with the, the top heavy. More damage and you know less, less risk. But I mean back to crushing counters which also I should add come from all dodge lights. And they all do 22. But after the uh, crush encounter, even though the palm strike does not work, that doesn't mean you can't still do it. Some people, you know, think it still works. So you could still get the light afterwards. But some people know that it does not work anymore. So that's when they would dodge your palm strike. And then you would follow up with a heavy. Because they'd be expecting the light. And if neither of those two options work, you know, just do that. Just heavy afterwards. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's it for the crush encounters. Uh, I don't think I missed anything there. Next, I want to go over Tiandi's hero specifics. First one being, which I kind of already went over. Did I go over this one? It's just this. So it's telling you after a basic attack, a basic line attack, you can get a palm strike. And that palm strike is not guaranteed. They can dodge out of it if they, you know, read it or react, whatever. Dragon kick cancel. So, with your kick, you can cancel it with a dodge, like this, or you can cancel it and do a dodge attack. It looks like this. Let me get some of my stamina back. Pretty useful, but it does kind of, you know, drain some stamina. Well, no, what am I thinking of? Really, only for the zone it'll do that, but I mean, if you're just throwing out a heavy and a kick, you should be fine in stamina wise. Yeah, I didn't take that much. Next, my favorite, the Bruce Lee special, Flow Light Water. Cancel your basic attack recoveries with a dodge or dodge attack. So, without dodging, your recovery will look like this. Yeah, I'm, I'm walking back now. He's taking a little bit. But if you cancel it with a dodge, it'll look like this. You don't have to just dodge back, you can go side. Or forward. I went to the side there. And this is very helpful, especially when you need to get your stamina back against someone, you know, bully wise, like Yorm or Cock, you know, someone like that. Or if it's a just hairy situation and you want to get out, you want to get some space, you know, just do all that. Dancing Dragon. Cancel your side dragon dodge with a dodge or dodge attack. Basically what that means is it's kind of like soft fainting, if you know what soft fainting is. Soft fainting is, you know, canceling your heavy or whatnot with a button that is not B. So in this case, you, know, you do the dragon dodge and you just dodge away. You could also cancel into a dodge attack, which I accidentally did there, but I was going to show it anyways. looks really fancy. You love it. Next is the extended dragon dodge and this is very helpful. So this move has dodging properties. So you can dodge a lot with this and I'll put up a clip to display that. Next is the zone cancel. So basically, you know, just as I said before, cancel the zone with a kick or faint. Another thing I'd like to go over in advance, K 
kick damage. Now, you know how I said before, you couldn't get damage off of a kick. But, there is a way that you can. If you're by a wall here, like Mr. Roach is, you know, you can get damage off the kick. So the way you get the damage is just do the kick. They hit the wall, you can get a heavy. If you're close enough, you can get the heavy. Now you might be wondering if that heavy is indeed guaranteed. And as soon as I find the block, I will tell you. The block is right here, excellent. So Roach, can you please... Oh yeah, I forgot you know not follow. Now, as you see, he is on block. As you see right there. But he cannot, you know, block. And distance also plays a factor. So if you're far away, kind of like this, you won't really get the heavy. But, you know, if you can't get the heavy, you can do the dodge light. Or, I believe you might be able to get the dodge heavy too. No, you cannot get the dodge heavy. So when you parry a light with Tian D, always do top heavy. I see a lot of Tian D out here doing side heavy. There's really no need to. Just do it from the top. And like I said before, don't worry about crushing countering. Because literally, you're better off just parrying. Now, a heavy will get you. I have to do that. Oh, yeah, I totally didn't take that off. Well, yes, I did. Why is he doing that? A heavy can get you a basic light or a zone. Next, I want to go over out of stamina pressure so I'll put them uh, exhausted what I like to do when someone's out of stamina I like to condition my opponent with three palm strikes in a row because usually after that third palm strike they're gonna want to dodge when they dodge send them to the ground now the damage for the out of stamina uh, punish so this is the first out of stamina punish First in the zone, and then heavy. Now his second out of stamina punish is this. Light, heavy. Now that also does 42 damage. So you might be wondering, that one does, you know, the same amount of damage as the first one. Why, why would I ever do the first one? And that is in case you want to sacrifice you know, your stamina for pressure. And I say that because, you know, go out. I can't believe I messed that up. Do it again, Roach. I'm trash. Do it again, Roach. See that dodge there? Uh, you could have turned that into something, you know, anything you want. Now, the next out of stamina punish is this. And to show that that works, I'll have Roach on block. And I'll parry. And that one does a total of 39 damage. Why would you ever do that when you could just light heavy? Well, that is because you should really only be doing this in 4v4. When you are getting ganked, you know, or in revenge or something like that. Now, you might be asking again. Okay, so why would I not do this? That, my friend, is because things like this exist. Things like this exist. And uh, revenge isn't very consistent in terms of uh, nullifying that. So I'm pretty sure we've all had instances where, you know, you hop into revenge and uh, you get punched by a scent, um, you get headbutted by a warlord, you get palm striked by Tiandi, you know, all that. So the reason why I say do the heavy first is even though the whole thing does a little bit of damage, if somebody tries to 
interrupt you, at least you get this big damage off. At least you get 27 instead of 12. Because I'm pretty sure you guys want more damage and you don't want to, you know, get less damage. But, I mean, if nobody is around you, you know, and you go in revenge, knock the guy on the ground, you know, obviously do the, you know, one of the other two. Or one of the other three. You know what I'm trying to say. You know, obviously, if you can, go for the more efficient one. But if you're surrounded and ganked, you're better off just doing the heavy first. Now for the tip segment. So the first tip <clears throat> I wanted to tell you guys is that when Tiandi dodges, his guard changes to whatever side he dodges to. So if you dodge left, it'll change to the left. If you dodge to the right, change to the right. If you dodge forward, it changes forward. And if you dodge back, it just doesn't change at all. So it changes for the you know main three directions. But for back, it doesn't do anything. The next tip I want to give you guys is if you're doing the dragon dodge and you want to stop it, unless you're doing a palm strike or a guard break or anything in mind, always cancel it with a dodge. That's, you know, that's just something I do and I feel like that's a lot better than feigning unless <clears throat> you plan on doing something after the faint. But if it's just a stop, then I would just dodge if I were you. Especially if you're doing another dragon dodge, which kind of uh, goes into what I mentioned earlier. We can just do it with another dodge. Uh, another tip: <clears throat> master the empty dodge. And what does empty dodge mean? Empty dodge means just dodging and not doing anything. And so, in cases like this, where you would do this. Your opponent will obviously expect you to do this because you're a Dion that you're going to think you're just going to light spam all the time. So then, if you do this, you can force a reaction out of people. If I have a video, I'll display that. Another tip I want to give you guys is if you're dodging this way, you're in that attack. Remember how I talked about doing a dodge into a dodge attack? So, for the sides, get used to doing this. Doing the uh, dodge heavy into the dodge light from the same direction. Because the dodge heavy comes from the opposite side that you're dodging from. But the dodge light comes from the same side that you're dodging from. Two. So, if you do this, it's going to trick a lot of people. It's going to get a lot of people off guard. You can even do it from the other direction, which you probably already know. Another tip. Get comfortable with doing attacks after you faint the first hit of your zone. Don't just do this. Or this. Because not everybody is going to fall for that all the time. So what you can do, and I notice this gets a lot of people, is this. Something like that. Or even palm strike. Which I've even displayed in you know, my videos. Whenever I do that, it, 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 it works. You don't even necessarily have to cancel into a heavy or palm so you can do light too. Just like that. Another thing you should do is get used to playing footsies and learn your range. So what I do when I go into a, uh, a fight or something, I'll just kind of dance around a bit, kind of like this. You see my movement here? Because I want to get a feel of what the enemy is going to do. I don't want to always necessarily make the first attack. So I'll just move around like this and because I'm very familiar with my range, I know if they do something that they're not supposed to be doing, 
I can counter it. Um, one thing you can use for range is the zone. It has very good range. I'll display that here. See how far away Roach is and how far away I am? Well, if you zone, you'll just get right in his face. So if somebody whips an attack and all the way back there, you do that. Or if you have a feeling that they're going to attack, you can hit them before they hit you. You don't have to use that either to close gaps. You can also dodge forward light, because that has very good range. But for range, it's really just zone and you know, forward light, dodge forward light that you'll be using, because the side lights do not have the same range. Their range is pretty terrible. And the last two tips I have is just to be creative, you know, have a little fun with your combos and stuff, get used to doing things that aren't average and don't light spam. But yeah, that's about it for the tips. Alright, now we're here with the outfit tutorials. And for the first outfit, I'll be going over uh, this one, my black and pink one. I picked this uh, one because, well, this is the one I was wearing in my last video and in the video I'll be uh, posting after this because I recorded that video before this one. So I went with black and pink just because like it looks pretty good together. I never used to be a big fan of pink and to be honest I'm not exactly but it really does go good with black and I don't really see it that often so I decided to pick it. Yeah. This is my helmet. I can't pronounce the name save my life so bear with me with that uh, you can get this uh, at any point uh, see I don't and for these I should say I don't remember the rep that I got any of these at so I'm sorry for not giving you the exact time frame in which you can get them at because when I actually started looking at most of this stuff I was already at you know a very high rep so I don't know when any of this you know unlocked and for this one especially like I was already rep 70 when this came out I'm pretty sure so I don't know when you unlock this at for the chest and arms that I have for this outfit this is from the uh, the For Honor Metal Trials event um, this was like I believe the event right before Warmonger's release so I'm not quite sure when you will be able to get this. I'd say maybe the next time an Apollyon event rolls out where we got the all black armor for our characters. So, and, and I don't know when they plan on bringing that back. So, in the time being, you'll probably have to use something in its place, such as this or something like that. The only thing is, you'll have to change the gray part. Which, let me put this on so I can tell you what I'm talking about. You have to change the gray part and the legs to a certain color and the good thing about this armor is it's naturally black this isn't the material like let me show you the, mater the material for that so if I change to anything else it's just gonna stay black and I love that uh, for the weapon I have the dark Bianchu I hope I pronounced that correctly but except for the the, the the ribbon. The ribbon is different. It's the sunken hay ribbon. I went with this one because it changes colors based on whatever uh, color you pick for your outfit. Um, and also my blade is the same for every preset. Now for the appearance. For the chest and back. I don't have a paint pattern or symbol, but I do have the embossing Gate of Memories 1 which comes from Rep 23, level 20. For the ornament, I have nothing. For the left shoulder, I have the paint pattern Gao Lei's Breath, which came from the Jun Hu event. So you won't be able to get this until this event circles back, and I don't know when it will. But there's plenty of other things you can use um, as a placeholder. No symbol or involving. Same as the other shoulder as well. For the material, I have black. 
for the standards, I have the Lunar Swirls 2, which came from the Return of the Halloween, Return of the Other World bundle, which came from the Halloween event. So when that circles back around, you'll be able to get that. It's just the wolf, and I love it, because the wolf is my favorite animal. No symbol or embossing. And the legs, no paint, no symbol, no embossing. For the color, it's blood vines, which you get from hitting rep 16, level 20. My feats are mainly based around me. Tian D does have like feats that'll help teammates out, but I don't care about teammates. I'm gonna be 100% honest. Like unless you're my friend or actually good, but no, randoms I'm not even my friends really. Get your own health <laughs> and get your own stamina. Like, if you, if you play Tian D and you run into Dom or Breach or 4v4, just run this. Run what I have. Because this will keep you alive. Don't worry about your teammates. Worry about you. So what this one does is make it so that you lose stamina at a slower rate. This one is a debuff. This one, when your health is low, gives you health back on hit. And this one, when your health is low, puts you in a, or gives you a shield. Very helpful. My alternative for this could be marked for death. The only difference is this one also lowers stamina and actually increases round two on kills. And this one only you know lowers defense, but I choose this one just in case I'm getting ganked. And this will affect this one will affect many people. Like it can affect the whole team standing in the circle. Whereas to this one is just single target. For my execution, I had Typhoon Punishment, Blade of Fate, which for this one, I don't think you'll be able to get again, because this was with the Prince of Persia event. Now they could possibly bring that back, but the chances of them bringing back the Prince of Persia event are very slim. This one, this is a must-have if you plan on playing TND, because this is the Disrespect Execution. So as long as being disrespectful or toxic, whatever, just use this. It's mandatory. And cheeky food. Fun fact, people hate this one because they have to see themselves on their knees. It's amazing. For you. For the emote, I have barred horn in case I have to teabag. This one in case I gotta flow like water. Sword spin, and then bring it with the PS2 Wolf effect, which comes from the belligerent outfit or belligerent alpha outfit. And signature Ashima Stone, which you get from the Year Four Season One Battle Pass. So if you didn't have that back then, I don't think you'll be able to get it anymore. But really, all these look good, so don't sweat it if you don't have this. And for the effects, sulfuric sparks, obviously, you know, I gotta, gotta flex. And then PS2 wolf for the bring it. Now, all of these three, uh, emotes, signature, and effects, they're all the same, so for every other outfit, I'm not gonna go over that, I'm just gonna go over the execution. Same with feats. It's all the same. This is what I have for this. This is a whole set for whatever that word is, and you can get that at any point, I think. <laughs> well, I got the chest, and the arms, and the helmet. Just a little spin. And once again, blade the same as the other ones, because all my blades are the same. For the chest and back, I have you know, nothing. For the ornament, I don't have the ornament, which I forgot to mention uh, with the other outfit. A lot of people need to realize that you don't always need to have an ornament for your character. Because, especially in Tiandi's case, the ornament will ruin the whole outfit. Like with this, like. Come on now, that don't even look right. Look this, this, it just looks terrible. 
ruins the whole thing. For the left shoulder, I'll have a paint or a symbol. I do have the embossing Sharp Tangles 3, which comes from Reputation 13, level 20. Same on the other shoulder. For the standards, I have Lunar Swirls. For the legs, I have Apollyon's Legacy. And no paint or embossing. And for the material, I have Cinnabar. And for the execution, I have Revolt for the Y. Revolt, Revolution, I can't read. Then Tian Ding for the X. People hate this one, even though it's supposed to be a respectful execution. People hate it because, like, honestly, you can finish watching the whole entire Avengers Endgame movie before this execution ends. And people hate that. Jung Shu Vanisher. And this one is a Halloween execution, so until the Halloween event comes back, you won't be able to get it, but as I'm recording this, or actually re-recording this segment, it is September 23rd, so Halloween's just around the corner, so this should be coming back. And then Cheeky Flu. Alright, and now for... One of my favorite outfits, this one. See, this one was made to honor Bruce Lee. You can see, you can see by the uh, bright yellow and black. And I didn't go with the whole, you know, all the way yellow and black stripes thing because I just added to, you know, pay respects to him and not to really imitate, but just pay respect. So. For the helm, I have the do rag. Even though Bruce Lee didn't wear a do rag, but he does now. For the chest piece, I have the fushi chest. I believe it's the same with the arms. Yeah. Okay. And once again, no ornament because an ornament would ruin this. Like. This looks horrible with an ornament. For the chest and back, no paint pattern, no symbol. Of the Sharp Tangles 3 embossing, which you get from Rep 13, level 20. <clears throat> For the shoulders, both left and right, I got Spire 4, which you can get Rep 0, level 1. For the standards, I have Lunar Swirls 2. No symbol or embossing. And for the legs, I have no paint pattern, no symbol, but the embossing is Sharp Tangles 3. For the material, I got the black. And for the color, I have Burning Forest, which you can get from playing ranked. It really uh, makes the yellow stand out. It makes it look like a highlighter, and I love it. For the execution, I have hold this. Wolf Among Sheep, which this one's just terrible. I mean, I got it just because it was an event execution. It, it's just terrible. I wouldn't even sweat over not having it. And then we got the Junk Ship Banisher. And then once again, we got the Disrespectful one. Alright, and that concludes the Tiandi After CCU tutorial. Now for the closing comments, I really just wanted to say, uh, when it comes to wanting to play a character or something like that, to an extent, don't worry about what other people do. Like, don't see anything I do and think, like, I should be doing this, or even, which kind of sounds weird saying because I literally just made a tutorial, but, like, don't look at how I play and think like, oh, if I'm not playing like he is, then, or like, if I'm not playing exactly like he is, then I'm doing something wrong or I'm terrible. Now, don't think like that. Just have fun, 
you know, learn the character, you know, get comfortable, be creative with your fighting style, uh, don't worry too much, to an extent, about, about bread and butter, like, I know that sounds weird, you know, in a fighting game, but, like, learn to do what works for you, and learn to do what works in, you know, certain situations. Don't worry about what people say, in a sense. Just have fun. Like, that's all you really gotta do. Just have fun. Be creative. Uh, figure out what works for you. And find a way to... Find a way to put that into whatever fight you're in. Or whatever. But, uh... Yeah. That's about it. That's all I got for you guys. I uh, hope this helps. And hope somebody enjoyed. Sorry if this wasn't helpful. This was... My first tutorial, so I was super nervous about making this, but, uh, yeah, hope it helped you guys. Shinigami out. Y'all.